Hi everyone, my name is Wolf from the Genesee Country Village and Museum Camp Program. One of the best parts about my job is I get to check the trail cameras and turn them into fun videos for people to see online. So I thought that I would share this part of my day with you by showing you what it's like to set the cameras, check the cameras, and maybe throw in some fun animal facts along the way. This is my trail camera that I use most regularly. Uh, it is very small, as you can see, it fits right in my hand. Um, it's waterproof, it has motion sensors right here um, that are kind of angled so you get to see all around. Uh, the camera itself is right here, and these are all lights that will help us to see at night, which is when most of the animals I'm looking for are active. There's a little hinge here on the side that you just pop and then it allows you to open the camera. There's battery pack there. I use, as you can see, Duracell. Um, there's a display screen here with all sorts of buttons. So when I turn it to set up, it will turn on. As you can see, it's a cam part. And it will show me what is just um, going to be seen on my camera. I also can uh, go through former shots, other things that are on my um, SD card. So I caught a kid there. Um, when I'm ready, I can tick it to on and it will start to count down as you can see there giving me 15 seconds to get out of frame before the motion sensors will activate. So I'm going to take mine off, close it up, and we're going to go set that camera. Um, but I'm ready to set my camera. So I'm going to look for a good spot um, and one thing to always keep in mind when setting a camera is what direction the camera will be facing. You see, you want the camera to be facing north or south, preferably north, and that is because um, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, which means if you have it facing um, either of those directions, the sun will make a glare on your camera at certain points of the day. So this gives us the best direction to point our camera. In that case, what I'm going to go ahead and do is turn around and I see an amazing tree right here behind me. Now I am gonna look closer at it as I do see a vine on that tree. I wanna make sure it's not poison ivy, which it doesn't look like it is. Um, so I can go ahead and use this tree to set my camera. This strap, um, which I'll use to put the camera onto the tree. So I need to go ahead and string that up. I will put it on, look around, and make sure it's the right direction. Let's just thread this. Let's thread that through. Pull it nice and tight. And Clip my strap. Now you can also kind of tuck this in so it doesn't shake um, in the wind, scaring things away, but this tree is large enough I'm not too worried about that. And the angle is facing north as we mentioned. So our trail camera is set and we are ready to see what we capture. Open it up and as I said there's a little toggle switch right down here I'm going to flick on. Once I see that's turned on and the numbers are starting to go, I'm going to go right ahead, close that up. You can see there's a light flash in there telling me that it is on. So this is one of my favorite locations on the Web of Life Trail. I'm able to put the camera low to the ground so I catch a lot of little wildlife like that squirrel. <laughs> Eastern gray squirrels are very common in our woods. Oh, here comes another one. This footage was captured in November of 2019. Can you guess why he's collecting leaves? It's getting close to winter and he's probably going to make a den. Oh, did you hear it? Whoa! I think those squirrels were communicating. Maybe the one was warning the other about a predator. Oh, 
Oh, here's a cousin to the squirrel, an eastern chipmunk. Oh, this one didn't stick around for long. And of course, here comes another squirrel. This one's collecting leaves too. You see how he shoves them in his mouth with his little paws? So cute. Here comes another squirrel. This one seems like he's sniffing something down there. I wonder if it's a hole maybe. Do you think something could be living in that hole? Ooh, this is some of the footage that was captured at night. Oh look, it's a cute little mouse. It could be a field mouse or maybe a deer mouse, but we also have white-footed mice in this area. See how he jumps around? I can see his eyes in the distance. Oh, there he goes. also known for that long tail. That tail's still in the shot. Speaking of tails, that possum used its tail to take leaves into that hole. I'm guessing they're probably making a den in there. Up to eight possums can use one den. This possum seems to be using the other end of its body. It's sniffing using its nose. I think it might be sniffing out some food. One possum can eat up to 5,000 ticks in a single season. We don't like having ticks around. And as a possum walks through the forest, it acts like a vacuum. All the ticks that try to stick to it end up getting eaten instead. What's this possum doing? <laughs> oh, he's sniffing the camera. And giving a close-up view of that tail. I see something in this shot. Can you find the animal? It's that tiny little mouse. And I hear something, too. Can you guess what it is? That whistle helps. It's a train. There are a lot of train tracks in the area near the nature center. Oh, <laughs> he jumped in the hole. Oh, here's another little mouse. And there he goes. Mice like to come out at night because it's harder for predators to find them. And there's another one. Mice are territorial, so I wouldn't be surprised if we were seeing the same mouse over and over. Maybe on different nights. 